Welcome back to the next fundamental video. This time we're going to be looking at lines of best fit and lines of worst fit and we're going to look at two different ways of calculating your gradient and y-intercept and quantifying the uncertainty in both the gradient and the y-intercept. So hopefully now you've got a graph that looks something like this. So I've just plotted my data from last time. I've got my t-values against my square root of l-values. In the error lines um, they are the uncertainties in t um, are the vertical ones and the uncertainty in the square root of L is the horizontal ones. Those horizontal ones are still pretty tiny so sometimes it's to your advantage to have a bit more uncertainty if you can. Um, remember when you're graphing this that um, you've transformed the L values you also need to transform the units so since I square rooted L the units are the square root of meters. Alright, so um, what we're going to do first is a line of best fit. So this is one method that you can use. Um, so the line of best fit, maybe I'll use a nice uh, green pen for this one. So the line of best fit follows the usual trend for a line of best fit. It's supposed to show the pattern or the trend in the data. So you want to get it as near to the middle of each of these um, error bars as possible. So uh, this data is pretty good actually. I can see here that I can get pretty close to all the centers um, just there if I go through that first and that last error bar. Great. So hopefully your data is the same and you don't have any error bars that are not um, intersected by the line. The error bars, even though they're shown as crosses, you can kind of think of them more as rectangles and the, the line of best fit needs to pass through each of those error bars. Otherwise you have an outlier. Ideally you'd go back and retest that data, but I understand that sometimes you don't have, have time and you just have to ignore that data point. The next thing you're going to do, which is different to 2.1, you're going to draw in a line of worst fit. Um, so now that you've got error bars, you can have lots of different lines that are valid. So um, valid lines will pass through all of the error bars. Um, this is a good line of best fit because it goes as near to the center as possible. Now we're going to draw another valid line, so it needs to go through all the error bars. But we're going to draw it so that the um, gradient of this line is as different as possible from this line of best fit that I've currently got. So the way I'm going to do that is go near the top of this error bar down here and go near the bottom of this error bar down here. Now before I draw in the line I'm going to make sure it's valid. So cool if I look here this line is going to pass through all of my error bars. Okay so I'm going to draw it in and I'm using red to represent my line of worst fit. So um, what I can do now is calculate the gradients of both of these lines uh, and as well as their y-intercepts. So the, I'll do the line of best fit first. Um, it's quite handy having them in different colors uh, so that you can see which one you're dealing with when the lines cross uh, down here. So I'm looking for a point somewhere up here that crosses neatly uh, through some grid squares. This one here is pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to circle that. And I'm going to look for another point down here somewhere. Um, so I want to get a nice big triangle, so a big distance between these these two points that I've selected, that's another good one there, uh, and I'm going to draw in the triangle. So all this working that I'm doing on my graph, you should be doing the same working on your graph if you're doing your graphs by hand. Later on I'll show you how to do all this in Excel, which speeds up the process a bit. Now I'm just going to walk right in the coordinates of these uh, two points that I've selected. Um, first the x, sorry the horizontal coordinate and now the, the vertical coordinate 2.22 2. it's quite a useful scale actually so that's the horizontal and then the vertical coordinates of that point right now I'm going to work out the, the rise um, hopefully all of this is coming back to you um, you do that by taking this value here your highest value and subtracting off it your lowest value for the rise, which is the second number in these brackets. Um, and oh, I can do this one on my head, yay! Okay, and then I'm going to calculate the run down here. Uh, so this time you take the x value from there and you subtract off it the x value from here. Oh, and again, I think I can do this on my head. Great. 
uh, and now I can calculate my gradient. So the gradient, and I'm going to put best under here, so I remember it's the gradient of the best fit line as opposed to the red one, which is the worst fit line. Um, you calculate gradient by doing rise over run. Notice that I'm showing all of my working, you should be doing the same and do it on your graph. Cool, and then the, dividing by the run down here. Oh, I'm pretty certain I know what that is as well. I think that's 2.0. I'm a bit embarrassed today. The calculator, my favorite calculator, it got left out. Well, when I say left out, my two girls took it outside and then they put it in the garden in the sprinkler. So it's currently drying out. I'm sure it'll go again, but I've got a, a stand in one, which I'm avoiding. So luckily I've got some good numbers for doing maths without needing that calculator. Here, I'm going to circle the point where it crosses the y um, axis, so the vertical axis, and I'm going to write down what the y intercept is. This is 0 0.02. Uh, I'll write that over here y int for best equals 0 0.02. I can double underline these because they're going to go into my equation later. Right now, I'm going to calculate the gradient and the y intercept of the error line, exactly the same method. I'm going to do it up here. Um, Bear with me while I do that. Okay, now what I can do is find the uh, uncertainty in my gradient here. So the way I do that is the same as with the error bars. I can find the difference between the gradient of the line of worst fit, which is kind of like the maximum possible um, gradient you could get uh, within these error bars. Um, and the middle value, which is the gradient for the best fit line. So um, the way we can do that is uh, remember delta, which means uncertainty. Uncertainty in the gradient is, in this case, we can just find the difference between these two values. Uh, so 2.00 minus all of this stuff here. And I think it's still in my calculator, so I can just do 2 minus answer. And I get 1 point, sorry, 0 0.13084 and so on. This is an uncertainty, so I can round, I should, I must round this to the one uh, significant figure. Okay, and then I can also work out the uncertainty in my y intercept. And I do that in the same way. Uh, I take the largest of the two y-intercepts, which is uh, this one here, and I subtract from it the smaller of the two y-intercepts. Uh, so I get an uncertainty in my y-intercept of 0 0.07. This is already to uh, one significant figure. Great. Which means now I've got values that I can round my um, gradient here too, so it needs to be rounded to one decimal place. So that should actually be 2.01 decimal place. Uh, in the next video I'll show you how to write your equation for the line. Okay, right now I'm going to show you the second method. Um, so this first method, um, you use a line of best fit and a line of worst fit. Another way to do it is actually to do two lines of worst fit. Uh, and these two lines of worst fit here, we've got um, the blue one, which is similar to the one on the previous page for the line of worst fit, and now we've got the other extreme, the most, uh, the steepest possible line you can make. Okay, uh, I've gone ahead and done all the maths already, but now we're just going to look at how um, we can work out the gradient of the line of best fit. So there's no line of best fit drawn, but if this is the, the maximum possible gra uh, gradient, and this is the minimum possible gradient, uh, if we average these out, we should get um, a value near the best fit. So the way you do an average of these two is that you add them up. Um, so I've got the two values here. And then you divide by how many there are. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that I've made a mistake somewhere. Okay, I 
fix my mistake and so I've sort of just stuck a piece of paper over top to try and cover it up. Um, so I made a mistake in calculating this gradient up here. Uh, so to find the gradient you add the two gradients together and then divide by two. This is my unrounded value because to round this I need the uncertainty in the gradient first. To do this you find the uh, the range in your gradients, so you subtract one from the other and then you divide that by two and that gives you your uncertainty. Remember all uncertainties need to be rounded to one significant figure, one significant figure, and then you can go back up here and round your gradient to the same number of decimal places, so that becomes 2.0. Uh, then to find the y-intercept, uh, you've averaged the y-intercept values that you've got from over here. Um, so you add them together, you divide by 2, and this is the y-intercept value I got, 0 0.04. Uh, I've, down here I've calculated the uncertainty in the y-intercept by finding the difference in the two y-intercepts that I've got by subtracting them and then dividing that by 2, and I get an uncertainty of 0 0.06. Uh, and these values are pretty much the same as what I got using the other method. So it's really up to you which method you use. I've clearly struggled with the second method, so maybe you should just do this first method. Anyway, next time we do a video, um, we're going to look at how to take these values and write them into an equation, and quantify the uncertainty in those equations, and see how close your equation is to the theoretical value predicted. Alright, hope this was helpful, and not at all confusing. Until next time, cheers.